Hello chemists, this is Ms. Placino and you are watching Screencast 12.2 on acid and base definitions. Today we're going to talk about the way that acids and bases are defined. It turns out there are multiple definitions and those definitions have evolved over time. So let's go ahead and get into it. If you talked about acids and bases in middle school, chances are you learned the Arrhenius definitions. According to the Arrhenius definition, a substance that releases H plus ions in an aqueous solution is classified as an acid. We talked about this a little bit oops, in the previous lesson. Uh, the presence of H plus ions in solution, um, especially if they're there in a high concentration, is indicative that we're looking at an acid. There are a couple different ways we can represent this. Uh, sometimes you'll see it written as this, where we have H2, uh, sorry, HCl aqueous combining with uh, just liquid water. And we get this H3O plus ion in a chloride anion. Uh, the name of this H3O plus ion is hydronium. And you can think of a hydronium ion as really just being a water molecule that has picked up an additional H plus. So we have water that usually looks like this. It's not too hard to imagine if there is an H plus floating around, uh, the negatively charged electrons on the oxygen are going to be attracted to that positively charged hydrogen ion, also called a proton. And you can picture the electrons capturing that hydrogen, put it down here, and making the hydronium ion not uncommon to have that existing in an acidic solution. You also might just represent uh, an acid in this fashion. We have aqueous HCl, and we know that's going to break up into H plus and Cl minus, both aqueous ions. Um, so really, for all practical intents and purposes, the H plus ion and the H3O plus ion are essentially the same. Aqueous H plus can just exist as H plus on their own or as H3O plus. Don't get confused by that. It's really just two different ways of saying the same thing. Acidic solution. According to the Arrhenius definition, as we talked about in the previous lesson, bases release hydroxide ions into an aqueous solution. Usually that's just represented like this. You've got something like sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base. You dissolve it in water, and that's going to dissociate or break apart into sodium ions and hydroxide, OH minus ions. What I'd like you to do here is try to classify these six substances as Arrhenius acids or Arrhenius bases based on what we just talked about. Um, if you're feeling confident, go ahead and try to name them. Definitely worth getting that extra practice in. So pause the video, try them out. All right, so if we take a look at H2SO4, hopefully it's pretty obvious that this is an acid. Uh, we've got these donatable protons up front, and the name of this compound, when dissolved in water, is sulfuric acid. If we go down to the next one, again, protons up at the front, we're talking about an acid. HNO3, when it's dissolved in water, forms the strong acid, nitric acid. If I take a look at the next example, oop, I got a hydroxide present, so there's a very high likelihood, actually in this case, a definite chance that I am looking at a base, uh, more specifically, calcium hydroxide. Hopefully you're starting to see a pattern. Hydrogens up front are donatable, often indicative of an acid. Hydroxides at the end are going to be able to dissociate away from the cation. We're gonna have a base. When you get to this one, you're probably thinking, oh, there's some hydrogens, acid. But wait, if you were to take the pH of this substance, or even more generally speaking, just take some litmus paper and dip it into a solution of NH3, you would see that this turns litmus blue. If you remember from yesterday's, or I guess the previous lesson, if litmus turns blue, that means it's in the presence of a base. When you look at NH3, you don't see hydroxide anywhere. How is this possibly a base? This acid's not right. This is a base. Since ammonia is a base, but it can't be dis, uh, explained using the Arrhenius definitions, that means that our definitions of acids and bases need to, um, need to evolve. 
Bronsted Lori definitions of acids and bases are a little bit different from Arrhenius, and that's going to help us explain why a molecule like NH3 behaves as a base. According to the Bronsted Lori definition and this amazing drawing that I found, an acid is any species that can donate a proton. Uh, sometimes, more simply, they're just called proton donors. This definition is really exactly the same as an Arrhenius acid. When an Arrhenius acid is dissolved in water, hydrogen ions are produced. Oh, this sounds like the same exact thing. Um, where the change comes into play are with bases. Uh, previously, we were defining bases as something that releases OH- ions into solution. According to the bronsted lowry definition, a base is any species that can accept a proton. Uh, more simply, they're just called proton acceptors. So let's get back to our idea with NH3 and see if we can figure that out. Oop, I lied. Go back. Uh, we've got NH3, and I'm going to draw it as a Lewis dot diagram. We also have water, because it needs to be an aqueous solution. We end up making a basic solution. The presence of hydroxide ions in solution makes something basic. NH3 can't produce hydroxide ions on its own. Hopefully you're thinking, oh, well, I kind of see a hydroxide ion right here. It's just trapped in a water molecule. Uh, well, just like the lone pairs of electrons on oxygen were able to grab an H+, this lone pair of electrons on nitrogen can sometimes grab a hydrogen away from a water molecule. That's going to give me NH4 with a charge of plus one. It's also going to produce OH minus ions. So even though ammonia can't produce hydroxide ions on its own, it can steal a hydrogen from water and kind of create hydrogen ions through this backdoor method. Uh, this is why ammonia is basic. Um, it is a base according to the bronsted lowry definition, not according to the Arrhenius definition. It can't be defined using that definition. So let's try it out. These are a little bit more challenging for most students. Um, see if you can classify these as an acid or a base, and go ahead and give it a shot to try to name it. Pause the video, try it out. All right, as I look at this first one, um, in order to be in a bronsted lowry acid, I have to be a proton donor. I don't see any protons to donate, so this thing has to be a base. Um, SO32- is the sulfite ion. If I go down to the next one, HNO2, oh, I have some H pluses that I can donate. That makes HNO2 a proton donor or an acid. Uh, and the name of this acid is nitrous acid. Oh, here's CH3COOH. We've talked about this one in the past. Hopefully you remember. Even though this looks tantalizing to classify as a base, it is not. Just that H is donatable. This is also an acid. Um, another kind of infamous example that the Regents likes to use to try to mess with you is this. CH3OH. Man, that looks like a base. It is not. This is an alcohol. It's called methanol. And we'll talk more about that when we get into organic chemistry. But for the time being, just kind of jot that down, squirrel it away. CH3OH is not a base. It is an alcohol. I digress. Um, NO3. Minus, again, no protons to donate. This must be a proton acceptor. So that is a base. That is the nitrite ion, uh, sorry, nitrate ion. Uh, H3P. Mm, we can donate those hydrogens. That's why they're out in the front. That's going to make this an acid. And then we get to HCO3 minus. I see a proton. That's going to be an acid. Oh, wait. I also have a minus sign which suggests that HCO3 minus the hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate ion is capable of accepting a proton as well. It means it's also a base. So as long as you didn't leave this one blank, you at least got it half right. HCO3 minus can behave as both an acid and a base. You might be thinking, oh gosh, we have a bipolar molecule. That's not what we call them in chemistry. They are called amphoteric substances. 
Amphoteric substances can behave as a Bronsted lorry acid or base, meaning they're capable of both donating a pr uh, proton, like an acid, and they're capable of accepting a proton, like a base. Oh, there we go, I just said that. So if we take a look at HCO3 minus, if we add a hydrogen ion to it, so it's accepting a hydrogen, it's now behaving as a base. We're going to create H2CO3, also known as carbonic acid. It is possible for this hydrogen to be donated. I could lose a hydrogen ion, having HCO3 behave as an acid, and I could create the carbonate ion, CO3, with a charge of minus 2. So most substances, in order to be classified as amphoteric, have to have two things going for them. Um, since they need to act like an acid and be a proton donor, it's important that they have a proton or an H present in their formula. The other thing we need is the ability to accept a proton. And a lot of times that's kind of shown by the substance or the species having a negative charge. That tells us, oh, it can take a positive charge and become neutral. One exception, and it's definitely worth writing down, Water is able to behave amphoterically. Um, we know from previous lessons that uh, hydrogen ions can be gained by water to make hydronium, H3O+. And just a couple minutes ago, we talked about how ammonia is able to steal a proton away from water. Essentially, then water is behaving as a proton donor um, to make hydroxide. So definitely write this down. Water is amphoteric, and these are the two that we're able uh, the two uh, species that we're able to make. Oh, we did not do the quiz review. All right, there aren't really any practice problems for this. Um, what I would suggest doing is just getting really comfortable with these definitions of acids and bases. Arrhenius acids and bases, those are the definitions you learned in middle school. Associate H plus with an acid and OH minus with a base. Not all acids and bases can be explained through the Arrhenius theory. So we have the bronsted lorry theory. Uh, according to the bronsted lorry theory, think about acids and bases as proton donors and proton acceptors. Um, as you might imagine, they have to come in pairs, and that's going to be important in future lessons. All right, I think that's all I've got for today. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and I hope you found this helpful.